guys, how's it going? It's Al. Week 7 on DraftKings has brought us another single game showdown on Thursday Night Football, a contest between the New York football giants. I never understood why they call them that, but they are. Well, I know why, because the New York Giants used to be a thing, then they moved to San Francisco for baseball. Whatever. We didn't call them the New York baseball giants. Why don't we call them the San Francisco baseball giants? Things to ponder, I suppose. But I digress. The Giants are playing the Philadelphia Eagles in their traveling practice squad on offense. Uh... And the Giants' defense hasn't been very good, so it's going to be interesting to see actually what happens in this game. Uh, <clears throat> like any other showdown, we're going to break this down. We're going to look at specific players. We're going to talk about lineup building and correlations and how you're going to build lineups to try and take down whatever tournaments you're playing, whether they're single entry, three max, mass multi-entry, or whatever. Uh, we're going to uh, use the Fantasy Labs lineup builder. There is a link down below if you wanted to. Uh, get a discount on a short-term or a longer-term membership at Fantasy Labs to try out their lineup builder because uh, I recommend that it's a skill that everybody needs to learn how to use whether or not you're a big or a smaller bankroll player. If you've never used mass multi-entry, building 100 or 150 lines with a lineup builder, it's something that you need to try and tackle because some of you are going to be very, very good at it. I can tell you for sure that some people in this community, in our Discord, have had great success with it this season after never using it before. Uh, and using the correlation techniques that we talk about and lineup building techniques and, and things that we're learning to attack. And they're doing it in the five cent, 10 cent, 25 cent games and really having a sweat every single weekend and every single showdown slate. And it's a lot of fun. So it gives you an opportunity to flex some muscles that you've never used before. If you're going to use Fantasy Labs and want to sign up and you've never used a lineup builder before and never used projections for that, I highly suggest going with the five day option uh, where you can log in, sign up for it on Thursday morning. You get it for the Thursday night slate, the main slate on Sunday, the Sunday night slate, and the Monday night slate. So you get three showdown slates that are island game showdown slates, as well as a main slate on DraftKings to really kind of flex things and see uh, if this is something that you're interested in doing. And you can get in these five and 10 cent turners for 700 or 750 for your 150 lineups or $15 for the 10 cent tournament and have an upside of like five or $10,000 up top. One of our users, one of our community members last week took down the mini max and we've had other users who have had great sweats in that and made some money. Like I said, it, it's, it's a different way to play and it's not covering all the bases, all those things that people are concerned with. If you think it's as easy as using it and printing money, it's not it's definitely a skill that you have to learn how to, to utilize. So let's talk about the slate. As always, like the video, subscribe, notifications bell, 10%, leave a reply, click something. Starting with the quarterbacks, Carson Wentz. If you're playing season long, I would say that Carson Wentz is, is somebody that you might want to try to buy low at if you're having quarterback problems. If you had Dak and you lost him, uh, that opportunity may be gone after the 30-point day that he had against Baltimore, but I don't think that it is because people are very down on this offense based on all the injuries that they've had at skill positions, how bad Ertz has looked. Uh, but Wentz is somebody who can pile up points, and he has two running backs, Miles Sanders, who is probably going to be out for this Thursday night game or is out for this Thursday night game, and Boston Scott behind him, <clears throat> who are high-usage running backs in the passing game, so they can help him out uh, getting 300 yards, getting uh, multiple touchdowns in a game. And then on the other side, we have Daniel Jones, who's been bad. There's, there's no two ways about it. He's been really bad, but Pittsburgh, very good defense. Chicago Bears, very good defense. San Francisco 49ers, excellent defense. Los Angeles Rams, very, very good defense. Washington, great front seven, not good on the outside, but still a good high-pressure defense. Dallas Fantasy Carnival, I don't know why he did not have a good game against them. It could be scheme. He could just suck. Uh, definitely a possibility. One thing that Daniel Jones does not get enough credit for is his ability to have a floor with his legs that most quarterbacks don't have. One game this year, he has run for less than 20 yards. 22 against Pittsburgh, 21 against Chicago, 49, 45, negative seven against Dallas. Again, this is an upside down game at the Fantasy Carnival. No funnel cakes for Daniel Jones. 74, 49 of them coming on one rip uh, against Washington. So... He has more talent with his legs than he has given credit for. And if he can put it together a little bit through the air, and I would assume that brighter days are ahead for Daniel Jones, based on the fact that you're just not going to play a top five or six defense five of six weeks, uh, and now he gets some of the softer defenses that are in his own division, it should be interesting to see if Daniel Jones is kind of a GP play, GPP play moving forward, obviously on showdown. 
uh, we're going to take shots at him because there's only one game that we're going to go with. If we're going to use Daniel Jones as our captain, you know, if you're building captain lineups, when I, when there are more human quarterbacks like Daniel Jones or Carson Wentz, I tend to look at them uh, and try to limit the pair to 15 or 16% total uh, usage in terms of my captain spot. I will go way over that in terms of my flex usage on them as they have higher uh, median projections than most do. But if I'm building a Daniel Jones lineup, I need to build two groups if you're building individual groups uh, or if you're building lineups by hand. Any lineup that has Daniel Jones in it, you need to have at least two of all of his pass catchers involved in that team, okay? Uh, you can extend this as far as you want down the board with guys that are active on that day. If you want Caden Smith in there, if you think that he might catch a ball or two uh, at 2K, if you think Wayne Gallman's going to see the field, I personally don't. Uh, you can get these guys in and at least two in every lineup that includes Daniel Jones at captain. The second group that I'm going to build with Daniel Jones is going to be around... Everybody on the Philadelphia Tech. Also, in Daniel Jones groups, I will be including the kicker, tight ends, everything in that group. Not running backs because they're not really high volume pass running backs. If Saquon was there, we'd use him. Freeman, not really interested in, in just piling him into lineups with Jones at captain. I think they're a little bit mutually exclusive from one another. Uh, we're going to include Carson Wentz. Miles Sanders, as I spoke about before, he's going in for an MRI, looking at the knee injury. We don't know what the situation is. I'm assuming as of right now, that Miles Sanders is not going to play in this Thursday night game. We're going to assume that Boston Scott is the guy. And if that changes and Miles Sanders is a full go on Thursday night, ignore that and play Miles Sanders. So for right now, I'm going to ignore Sanders. We are going to use Fulgham. We are going to use Scott. IR, no, probably not playing. Zach Ertz, Jesus. You know, questionable, sure. Rogers, yeah. Ward, sure. K Elliot, yes. Anybody that you think is going to see the field. Hightower is super cheap at 1,200 if you want to include him in that Daniel Jones bring back group. And I'm going to make sure that we get at least one of everybody in that Philadelphia group. Second thing that we need to look at is most of the showdown lineups are one with a running back or a wide receiver in the captain spot. So Darius Slayton, assuming that he's going to be okay for this game, has been one of Daniel Jones's favorite targets and because of his big splash ability and usage in the red zone and end zone is more than likely one of the highest possible scoring guys in any lineup that is going to have a captain in it from the Giants passing game I'm going to utilize Daniel Jones in that lineup whether it's him whether it uh if we're going with Evan Ingram in that lineup at captain I'm going to have Daniel Jones there if we're going with Golden Tate Daniel Jones will be at flex in those lineups because Golden Tate's performance is highly correlated with Daniel Jones's performance, as is every pass catcher. And if they're the captain, if they have a two touchdown day, that means that Daniel Jones had at least two touchdowns on that day. Uh, and he should be in the flex while Golden Tate should outscore him because of the 1.5x there uh, and full PPR. So any of those players, same thing goes for captains on Philly. If we're utilizing Fulgham at our captain spot, and he's been tremendous, right? This kid has been absolutely fantastic the last two weeks. I think he's gonna be a very popular captain on this slate, assuming that all of the injuries are still where they are at. Uh, there's just nobody to throw the ball to. So with a condensed list of players to target and Carson Wentz throwing it roughly 40 times a game, 25% of 40 is 10 targets. If you have a 10 target expectation on DraftKings, you have a high chance of paying off your salary. Carson Wentz will be in every one of those lineups. Same thing goes, uh, not going to include him in Boston Scott lineups at captain. Sorry, I'm not going to force Wentz into Boston Scott lineups if he's the captain, but I'm also not going to disallow it uh, like you would with some captain running backs sometimes, but I'm not going to do that here. Uh, sorting by Philly is just easier. Uh, if we come down here, we're going to use Greg Ward as our captain. If that's the route that you want to go, then fine. If you think that uh, Hightower is going to be your captain, we're going to make sure Wentz is in that lineup as well. Uh, and if Djax is back, if he has a big day, clearly Wentz also had a big day. The last group that I'm going to build or suggest that you build if you're doing this by hand is going to be to make sure this one may be a little bit different. My typical group that I build is no more than one kicker or defense 
in any lineup at flex, and I never allow kicker or defense and captain. I'm still not going to allow kicker or defense and captain in here. If a kicker or defense and captain uh, wins the slate, I am just not going to win that slate. That's just the way that it goes. I'm going to try and play the percentages and be on the highest percentile chance at winning, and I've been very, very close. I took down one already this year. I was very close to a 30K bank and very close to a 25K solo bank uh, on another showdown slate. So the process is there. We just got to get lucky within that top 1%. And that's the route that I like to go is to focus more on the position players who have much higher ceiling and upside by limiting the defenses and the kickers uh, to one in any lineup. The other thing that I suggest if you're going to do that is to not look at the DraftKings app until like the middle of the third quarter because the first half of the game, everybody's got defense in captain and defense in two defenses in flex already starts with 25 or 20 points and they're way ahead of you. And you look like you're having a horrible night until the offenses actually start to compile points. So like on showdown, I rarely look at the standings until halfway through the fourth quarter. But if you're going to do this stuff, definitely don't look at all until you get like halfway through the third quarter at a minimum. So looking over at fantasy labs, uh, we're going to make five rules. These five rules are basically in play for me on every showdown. I don't just use these rules. I then will go to the player correlations tab and the player groups tab, and I will make rules and groups based on the run of lineups that it keeps building for me and combinations that I don't want to see together in flex or combinations that I don't want to see if a player is in captain or if I'm not getting enough of certain players, uh, I will boost those players using the player groups or player correlations buttons. And those are going to all be unique. But these five rules are what I set for every single showdown. These are the base rules that you should then set and also then save in your templates. Rule number one, as we talked about before, pair your captain quarterback with at least two wide receiver, tight end, or kicker from the same team. Pair your captain quarterback with at least one quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end from the opponent's team. Pair any captain quarter or any captain wide receiver with exactly one quarterback from the same team. Pair any captain tight end with exactly one quarterback from the same team. Limit to at most one defense or kicker from the same game. You can also build more rules if you like. I tend to not do it because of the high variance involved. Uh, like if you have a captain running back, disallow uh, the defense from the opponent. Uh, there, there's plenty of other rules that you can work with. I tend to do that on a game by game and a case by case basis. And if you think that both teams are going to give up a ton of sacks and have high turnover potential uh, and aren't going to get into the end zone or going to stall, feel free to change this to limit at most two defense and kickers on the same game. So like I leave it at one. We've already done a run from these. Apply your settings. I've already run the optimizer once. As you can see, if we check our captains, the first thing that we did was make sure that our captain quarterbacks are at most 8%. That limited Wentz to 8%, Jones to 8%. We can click on Carson Wentz and see only our Carson Wentz lineups. We can check our exposures in flex to see which wide receivers. Fulgham is our highest used with Deshaun Jackson, Slayton, Tate, and Ward are in some of those lineups. Tight ends, Kroom and Rodgers, both from the Eagles. Running backs in those lineups, mostly Freeman, 33% Boston Scott. So there's a lot of ways that you can kind of look uh, at your exposure, or you can just click all. And we now know that Carson Wentz has all of these guys. 100% of our Carson Wentz captain lineups have Daniel Jones. We can make that not happen by setting a rule very easily. We go to settings. Wait for it to load. We hit player correlations. We insert rule when lineups include Carson Wentz at captain. Make sure that it says captain. Add rule. Uh, decrease Daniel Jones flex by 25%. Boom. Apply settings. We can then rerun it and Daniel Jones's projection, anytime that it's got Carson Wentz in captain, he will show up in less of these lineups because we're decreasing his projection anytime the lineup builder puts Carson Wentz at the captain spot. You're going to build these groups. You're going to have some fun. You're going to enter the mini max and let me know if you guys won. Tweet at me on Twitter. Go follow me on Instagram. Join the Discord because it's extremely important for you to do so. Have yourselves a good time this week. Play for fun. Don't run vanilla lineup builders. Just don't go to the site and think that you're going to click generate lineups and then you're just going to be printing money because that's not how this works at all. You got to put a lot of time in making these lineup optimizers dance for you in the way that you want. Have fun. And I'll see you on the next video here. He's a legend.